Vietnam by motorbike, a journey that has no structure apart from reaching the capital of Vietnam in just three weeks' time, and hopefully in one piece. Last episode, you saw our toughest stretch of this trip yet, pushing ourselves to the limit after being caught in very unpleasant conditions. Today's episode shows how quickly that can change as we push further up north in the most beautiful weather. We reach a seaside town that has seen better days before enduring our penultimate ride on a hectic highway. We visit a very popular yet outstanding viewpoint that proves to us that the way that we travelled through this country was the best decision we could have made. Good morning. We've woken up to a beautiful sunrise and also the sun is completely shining. It's not it's too blue cold. Sky. There's not a cloud in the no. sky today. I can't believe how uh -oh. much like 24 hours difference makes, which is partly sad because the drive yesterday would have been so nice if it was like this, but I think what we're going to go through today is going to be just as nice. There's a route, the highway that we were on yesterday to get here. You could take that the whole way, which will take about four hours or there's an inland route that will take four and a half hours, which I think is what we're going to do, because I, I don't want to be on a straight road for four hours, it'll be so boring. We've got the last of our <laughs> the last of our wet clothes on the side, just drying off. And hopefully this will be the last time, and then when we get to Hanoi, we'll be able to hand them over and get them washed, because they reek, they're yeah. so bad. <laughs> the, the whole of our bag just smells of damp. No. All of our clothes are filthy. Like I don't think we've been clean for the past four weeks. <laughs> yeah, even when you um, shower, you put your stinky clothes back yeah. on. But I wouldn't change anything so far. It's been really, really good. Yeah, it's all about the adventure. And but, I'm excited for today's adventure. Yeah, this is the last stint now, so we've got to make the most of it. Today's ride was something that we didn't expect to happen. After yesterday's dramas, we thought the picturesque riding was over for us. But as always, Vietnam poses its beauty in the most unspecified manner. To say we're in good spirits is a massive understatement. just stopped over for a photo shoot because this road is just incredible just a straight line with these mountains around it absolutely incredible we're only we're only like 50 minutes down the road and i don't want it to end already I, i'm actually getting a little bit sad that like this journey's coming to an end today i'm thinking about driving slower just so it lasts longer i was thinking the exact same thing on the bike mm. i was thinking Gosh, am I going to be emotional when this is all over? I know, I was getting sad then. When I saw the time going down fast, I was thinking, like, this is going to be sad when it's over. And then flash, flash back to this time yesterday. I know, yeah. I was thinking... <laughs> it's mad, isn't it, how quickly it changes. Yeah. But this, this road so far is beautiful. There's no one on it. It's just... Right now. Yeah, you can't hit anything. There's just some water buffaloes over there, grazing away underneath that mountain. It's spectacular. Yeah, this is, and the weather just feels so like crisp and fresh. Like just look at that road behind you with the bike. And the sun is shining. Oh. That is amazing. Amazing. Thank you. 
would you look at this? View. Wow. We've just been able to find a little pull-in spot and we've been greeted with this really good view, which is what we're after. And Mitch is now going to try and <laughs> get the really tight knot out of the bambi and I think we're going to stop here and eat them. But this like, ride is just going so quickly. There's so much to look at. The sun on your face when you're riding is something completely different. Like, it's such a good experience. I'm blocking all the wind for you as well, but it's perfect. Yeah, it is. The wind chill is still a little bit there, but it's uh, it's durable. Yeah, it's not the warmest still. We're still laid up, but with the sun on you, it's, it's really nice. And there's just still not a cloud in the sky. So now we've got some soggy bambi and this view. Mmm. Good? Yeah. It tastes like a kebab. Oh, nice. And go red water. I think this might be one of our last stops before we get to Vin. We have got about an hour and a half, so unless something completely wows us, I think we'll just be cruising along. It's been really nice, isn't it, driving? Yeah, this, this area is like, it's still really rural, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But I think this is where a lot of people must work because of how much farmland there is around. There's just for miles and miles, there's just paddies and like, this is the first time we've seen sweet corn and now there's just fields and fields of sweet yeah. corn. It's, it's, it's really set up for that and it's given me like French vibes too because there is like, how many churches? One there, we've just gone past one as we turned. So one, two, three, four, five, would you say there's two in the that distance? That might be the same one. Or four. Well, anyway, there is so many churches around the area and they're all very French inspired. It looks like it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There's a bit more traffic on this road again now. A lot more trucks and buses that are trying to kill you. But adds to the fun. break up the journey to Nimbin, we booked a hotel in a beach town called Kwa Lao, a place we expected to be full of people and beachside restaurants, but as you will see, it turned out to be quite the opposite. God, does it look like we've been driving <laughs> for so long today? It's like four and a half hours, but I think it's even longer than that from the fact that we've stopped quite a few times. But we've made it to a place called Kualao, Ku I think. Kualao, I don't know. It's in, it's just up from Vin, like very close. It's just actually by the sea, but this place is like derelict. Don't think it's a very usual tourist spot, but it's the only way we can break up the eight hour long drive is by staying here, so it's four hours tomorrow. We've done well, it's been a really, 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 really nice ride. I've enjoyed it so much. It's kind of sad that it's over, but my bum definitely needs a rest. Well, we're staying in a bit of a shithole. It's not what we expected after such a lovely ride and drive today but yeah 
I, I don't know. It's. I think it's the last place that we're going to stay in that's bad, though. The yeah. Tomorrow we're going to be in Nimbin, and then I think we might stay there for two days, but then the day after, when we get to Hanoi, we should hopefully be booking some nicer places, so... Yeah. Just gotta suck it up for one last night. It doesn't even look that bad on the camera. I wish you could s smell it in here. Yeah, I mean, the mould on the back of the uh, curtain sort of shows it. And I don't think we're gonna get heat in. Or the stain oh, yeah. on the sheet. Um, uh, yeah. Or the colour of the walls. I don't understand how a wall can get that dirty. I know. Like, what would you be doing for a wall to get that dirty? At least we've got complimentary sh soap and shampoo. Yeah, and nothing will ever be as bad as that Bangkok. I know. Store. Yeah, we got set off right, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I thought like, oh no, we should have been eased in, but no. After that break, I am. Um, Set for anything now. This will do. And also, it is, it is bittersweet as this will be probably the last, hopefully last place that we stay. That's rough. Rough. Because we'll be in tourist territory. Rough. <laughs> You're enjoying yourself there. <laughs> I really didn't think we'd be sunbathing like this again. Sunbathing in how many layers? If I got on, four layers. This is nice with the sun. Because of the buildings around, there's no wind either, so it's like, it feels like it's like mid 20s. And it's actually like 17 degrees. <laughs> We've just come and found a coffee shop just from where we, our hotel is and we've got ourselves a hot Baxil. I think that's how you say it. Badly. <laughs> I think it, I don't know, Baxil. It's Baxil. Baxil. Um, yeah, it's a hot Vietnamese coffee with condensed milk and normal milk mixed together within a shot. So it's very good, very sweet. And some water. And we're just soaking up the sun and trying to scope out anywhere that we can get some food in a little bit. We've just asked the lady here and she's recommended a couple of places. But I think that's all we're going to be doing. Feeling, having that like crash after being on the bike, kind of just go a bit tired. I know, I don't we? know why it makes you so tired. Yeah. Like, I, I feel knackered. I can understand why it makes you tired. Yesterday, the cold made me really tired. I think my body just burnt loads of energy from like... Shivering. Shivering <laughs> and being freezing. But yeah. I, feel, I even feel knackered today. Yeah. I need to do some proper exercise again. Yeah, we need to get back on the exercise game. I'll tell you that. Yeah. But only a few days left of this. So we may as well enjoy whatever feeling it is because we won't get this again. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss staying in shitholes, getting filthy every day, cold, and having a sore arse. Aww. <laughs> no, I actually will miss it. While having a walk around to try and find some food, we couldn't believe how run down and quiet this place was. We didn't know if it was due to the pandemic, the time of the year, or that the place had just lost popularity. Either way, it was eerie walking through a town that felt like it was once on a set of an apocalyptic movie. Well, what a great start to the morning. We've got up, the sun's shining, there's blue sky, and we've just come to our local pho place for breakfast. And it was like the Vietnamese version of an English calf. It was great, everyone was in there. We just had two beef pho, pho's, pho, pho, 50,000 each, and it was probably one of the best that we've had. The best, I reckon. You said you're the best. Yeah. Yeah, we've had one really good bum bao, and then that was a pho bao, and it was really good. So now we're really full and ready to go pack up the bags and hit the road and enjoy this, our final four hour ride yeah. of the trip. It's gonna be a pretty straight road today, but just gotta get there because Nimbin's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. So yeah. that's what's waiting for us at the other side. Exactly, yeah. 
Just casually using a really random contraption. Yeah. Some guy. It's like a. Have you got him again? Yeah. It's like a little motor with a winch on it that's just spalling off a wire, pulling the wheelbarrow up. So he just sits there all day taking that wheelbarrow. That is sick. <laughs> I'll tell you what, things are much easier without half and safety. <laughs> Second to last ride. How'd you feel? It is sad, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sad it's coming to an end. We've got an earphone each to listen to a podcast as we ride, but the sun's out. I'm, that's all I need. Yeah. Four, four hours, 190 kilometres, and I don't think there's going to be one bend <laughs> the whole way. Yeah, oh, we're getting there at about one. Yeah. Right, let's get cracking. Stop, like people trying to kill you like you get used to it after a while but it's just so draining yeah, this is pretty tough you're fighting for your life the whole way aren't you <laughs> uh, two hours left i think i'm just gonna have a bite to eat now and then try and get the rest of it done because yeah. it's not enjoyable is it no. there's nothing really to look at either it's very much just you couldn't look at anything either anyway because no. You've got to be concentrating on the road like 100%. Yeah. Well, 110%. Like. Yeah. You need to be thinking of things 10, 15 seconds before they even happen. Yeah. It's 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 crazy out there. We can't believe that this is the penultimate ride before we reach our final destination in Hanoi. The time has absolutely flown by and as the next episode will be our last of our trip through Vietnam, we thought it would be good to answer any questions that you guys may have. If you do have any, please leave us a comment on this video and we will answer as many as we can in our final episode. Also, a quick reminder that if you have enjoyed our videos, a like and a comment goes a long way. And also, please subscribe so that you can see what our next adventure will be. We've put ourselves in a massive rush as we've just realised that today's the last day of this clear blue sunshine and as I was sat here on the little patio and Mitch was taking a nap, I had to check the weather, realise that and also realise that we wanted to go to an amazing viewpoint and today's going to be the best day for it and we've only got about an hour left until the sun sets and it takes 
15 minutes to get there and between 30 to 45 minutes to walk up there. So if you ever think that we're really planned and organised, we're not. So now we're just rushing and stressing, trying to get there in time. I can't believe we're back on this bike again after the day that we've had on it. But if this is the only good clear day that we're going to get, I'm like, taking the chances of trying to get there in time. This is the one thing that I wanted to do that we did last time, but didn't get a good day for it and was determined to do again whilst we're here. So I'm just praying and hoping that we can get out there and get a good view and show you guys how amazing it is up there. Bye. Bye bye. We've got here in record time, parked at the closest one to where we walk. Now we've got to pay to get in. That was 15,000 to park and then I think it's 100,000 to get up here. Each. Each, yeah. So more of the expensive things that we've done. Oh my God, it's miles up there. It is, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big walk. And I'm hoping to do it in less than the 30 to 45 minutes as well. So we've got to get a move on. Poor Mitch still looks like he's like literally looks half asleep. He's all puffy faced. <laughs> but I'm not missing out on this. Right, let's get in. People pottering everywhere, but Morph's on a mission. Yeah, I need to get up there. As I already said we are doing this in quicker than they always say. I'm determined to do it in at least, I'm going to say 20 minutes. It's going to look, it's so steep though. Yeah, I know. It's going to be worse for me coming down than up, so I can... You won't have time to think about it. No. I was asleep 20 minutes ago and now I'm blowing up my arse. <laughs> This is tough. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Started off too strong. <laughs> oh. That guy's on Facebook. It's gone live on Facebook. As he's climbing up the steps. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh, it's so busy. I'm ready on fit. I said yesterday I wanted some exercise. <laughs> I think this is taking the piss. Yeah. How much we've climbed in like five minutes? <laughs> this place is absolutely breathtaking. It's just as good as when we came up last time. Aside from last time, I'd obviously forgotten how many people do actually come up, and we haven't been able to even able to get like a good spot to see it, um, to get a photo anyway. But the view's all like 360 round. If you're not looking at the mountains that way, then you're looking over the rest of Cantock that way. So it really is very nice. And we got here just in time. As you can see, golden hour is still happening, which makes me very happy. And now Mitch is just perched on the ledge. Wow. Could have got that. Yeah, there's just a crazy amount of people. This is at the highest viewpoint. There is one just below us, which is a little bit lower down, and uh, that's just as packed as well. So everyone had the same idea as us. But it's better than coming up tomorrow, I think, in the cloud. I'm glad that we've been able to see it with the sun setting and the blue skies. It's just absolutely amazing. I love when you're at the same height as the, the birds flying too. It's pretty cool. There's too many people. I don't feel right getting the drone up when there's this many people about. One, like it could hurt someone. And two, it's just like, I think it's rude. Like everyone wants to enjoy the sunset and everyone will just hear a drone <laughs> flying over. It's not fair. So it's a short and sweet visit <laughs> up here. I think it's not like someone's died. 
Well, I think it's one of them things where, like, I mean, I've never had a child, but when people say that they forget about childbirth after it's happened, that's what I feel like with this moment last time we came. I've only got the photos to look back on, not the sheer amount of people, and also the length it takes to get up here, and my quads are shaking. And it cost us 215,000. And it cost us 215,000, which would have got us a really good meal. Yeah, we could have had a curry for that tonight. I know. But it was something I'd like, got my mind set on, and we haven't really spent much on um, attractions this time. So. Yeah, because we've been seeing views like this for free the whole time we've been on yeah, the bike. Yeah, I know. It just makes me more grateful about the experience that we've had this trip on the bike. It's, yeah, it's been worth it. This has taught me that lesson, for sure. <laughs> right, now let's tackle the stairs down. Yeah, we're going to have to go slow. A bittersweet end to our last spectacular view in Vietnam. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on our final episode of the series. And remember to leave a comment if you have any questions about us or the trip that you'd like us to answer. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time.